The situation in the Pokrovsk Kurakov sector remains tough for the Ukrainian armed forces, but the Russians haven't managed to break through the front lines. Dmitro Zamilo, co founder and executive director of the Ukrainian Security and Cooperation Center, shared this. Fortunately, reports of the front line collapsing are not true. Our troops are under control, but Russia has a significant numerical advantage. For instance, in the south, covering Crimea, Kherson and Zaporizhia. And Zaporizhia, there are around 200,000 Russian troops working to strengthen their positions. In the Pokrovsk Kurakov sector, they've gathered about 120,000 troops, including reserves. Although our artillery situation has improved and we're getting closer to matching their numbers, now about one to two, it's still very challenging to target Russian infantry and we're feeling the shortage of our own infantry units, he said on Espresso TV. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces are actively defending their positions. As they retreat, they're inflicting heavy losses on the enemy, Zamilo noted. In very tough conditions, Ukrainian forces are working hard to hold the line. Reserves are being moved to the front to the most critical areas. For instance, the 14th Regiment of Unmanned Systems Forces is reinforcing Tourette's. Some units from the 128th Brigade and the Presidential Brigade are heading to the area north of the Kurakov Reservoir. The situation is extremely challenging. The Russians are trying to break through to the H-15 highway to cut off the main supply line for Ukrainian troops in Kurakov. In Selidov, the Russian army is trying to level the front line to launch an offensive on the city of Pokrovsk, the military expert explained. The Ukrainian armed forces units are actively preparing to defend the city. According to local residents, all the shops at the Pokrovsk market are closed. This may be due to decisions by the Ukrainian command to close all roads around the city, prohibiting entry and exit, which was notified to the population by the head of the local administration, Sergei Dobryak, who called on them to evacuate. The embattled frontline city of Pokrovsk has been a focal point of Russia's offensive in the Donetsk sector in recent months. The city is a key logistics hub for Ukrainian forces. Fortifications are being built in Pokrovsk and we are already entering the city and certain areas of the city will be blocked. So please leave these areas not entering or leaving the city, Sahi Dobryak, head of the Pokrovsk military administration said. Several echelons have already been built in the city, which will partially block the streets and neighborhoods of Pokrovsk. Entry and exit to the city will not be entirely blocked, Dobryak said, clarifying earlier remarks on national television. Dobryak's announcement follows reports that Russia has captured the nearby town of Selido. A NATO Neptune strike exercise involving the US and Sweden has come to an end. Neptune Strike 24-2 took place across Europe, from the central Mediterranean and Adriatic up to the North and Baltic Seas and it was the first NATO exercise that Sweden took part in since becoming a member of the alliance. Around 15,000 soldiers and sailors took part, as well as 20 surface combat ships, submarines, special forces and fighter aircraft. Neptune Strike is a strategic activity that shows NATO's deterrence and defense of the Alliance. And Neptune Strike shows that NATO has the ability to strike at any time, anywhere, in order to defend the Alliance. We've done a great experiences uh, during these two weeks. We have been conducting, for example, both close air support over the three Baltic states. We have also been uh, doing a lot of planning together with the US Navy, planning uh, larger air operations uh, with uh, air to air refueling and uh, a lot of air to air operations together with uh, the Super Hornets over the Baltic Sea. So we have a great up, great up experiences, both in the air and also on the ground as well.
The Shenzhou 19 astronauts have successfully docked with the Shenzhou 18 crew aboard China Space Station following their launch on Wednesday. Together, the two teams will undertake scientific experiments, focusing on the construction of human habitats. Among the Shenzhou 19 trio, Song Lingdong stands out as the youngest member. In 2018, Song, then a Su-35 pilot, discussed his experiences and insights in an exclusive interview with the Shanghai Media Group, highlighting the advanced capabilities of the Su-35 fighter jet. Song was admitted in 2007 to Air Force Aviation University and graduated at the top of his class. He then became his brigade's first post-90s third-generation fighter pilot. Song's brigade, equipped with these jets, has participated in South China Sea patrols in 2018 and other high-profile operations. By September 2020, Song officially joined China's third astronaut team. Dubbed the Southern Sword, the Su-35, a fourth-generation Russian-origin fighter jet with multi-role and twin engine, holds a special place in China's aviation mission. Fill 